Hi guys, welcome to another Road Pilgrim car review and today we've got something different for you because we're taking a break from the last three luxury SUVs that we've reviewed and we're going to review a more budget friendly SUV or crossover and today behind me we have the Suzuki S-Cross which is Suzuki's um, crossover model available in Singapore at a sort of entry level price. So for today's review, we're going to check out its exterior, jump inside and check out its interior and of course take it for a drive to see how it performs because although it is an entry level car, this car actually drives pretty well. So I'm going to share a little bit more about that in a bit. And before we get on with the review, if you are a driver in Singapore and you're thinking about selling your used car or consigning it for the best price possible, be sure to check out the link in the description box below because through that link, we will be able to provide you the highest possible valuation and price for your used car. So if you're interested if you're interested to check it out, it's completely free to inquire, please go check out the link. And with that, let's get on with the review. All right guys, so jumping straight into the review, this is the exterior of the Suzuki S-Cross and as you can see, it is built as a sort of a crossover, much like its predecessor um, where you know it was kind of built in this uh, semi crossover SUV state. It, I mean, it's not as high up and elevated as a full fledged crossover, but it's also not a hatchback, so I guess that's why they call it a crossover. Now, um, generally speaking, this car is to an extent built to a cost and it is an entry level vehicle here in Singapore. But I'm glad to say that Suzuki have taken some effort. Uh, quite a lot of effort actually to actually style the car in a way that makes it still quite presentable so generally speaking if you check out the front i think you would agree that there has been quite a lot of effort taken to make the car look less utilitarian than it might actually be so you know if you think about our experiences with entry-level Toyotas, for example, some of them can look very, very basic. But uh, here we have a car that looks like it's been styled. So there has been some effort, you know, nice headlamps here. Um, there is a pattern on the grille. It's quite a nice pattern, actually. Um, and it's not just some basic pattern. Uh, the bumper looks like there's some styling done to it. it. Almost looks like it has a front lip. So I think generally, quite a handsome looking car. It's got quite a bold fashion as well. It's got quite muscular angles. But anyway, let's not go too much into that. Let's, let, let, let's take a walk around the car. As standard, you will get 17 inch tires. Here you go. And these are probably, you know, a really good spec if you're looking for maximum uh, comf uh, comfort, economy, and probably power. But if you wanted a better aesthetic, you know, there is still quite a lot of space for you to increase the wheel size of this car and quite a lot of wheel gap as well you know so you know if, if you're thinking about lowering the springs as well i think that would be another option and down the side here there is an oddly square petrol cover here that kind of sticks out from the rest of the silhouette but further down the back you can also tell that there's been some effort here so what you get is you get some sort of illusion of a full length light bar because there is this big chrome strip across and then you've got designed headlights, they're not just basic headlights and then you've got the S-Cross emblem with the hybrid emblem at the side there and of course you've got a bumper that is made up of more cladding that gives this car an overall quite a rugged looking um, aesthetic uh, but let's jump inside the car now and check out its interior All right, so now we are in the cabin of the Suzuki S-Cross. And generally speaking, it is an interior that is quite rudimentary. Um, but you do get everything that you kind of need. So, not sure where to start, but let's start with the infotainment unit here. So this infotainment unit is upgraded from the previous generation of Suzuki's that you have seen in the past. And I think this is a lot better. Um, the interface looks a lot better. Uh, obviously, it's still, it's still not on par with some of the more premium systems on the market. But like I mentioned, this car is sort of built to a cost and it is meant to cater to an entry-level segment. Um, so I think... This is quite understandable and this is quite in line with the expectation and I think Suzuki have also tried to add some value to uh, the consumer's 
through this infotainment unit because actually despite being an entry-level car this car actually comes with a 360 camera which is quite cool it's not the most high definition or high res system and uh it looks a little bit makeshift <laughs> but it works nonetheless so it completely works you can see around you and i've tried it in some parking situations as well and uh it actually it, it's pretty accurate so when you're in a parking lot I like to use the top view 360 to kind of see if I'm actually straight within the lot and this does an excellent job and you know you don't really need anything too fancy as well um, let me see what else we have here so then there is so it basically shows you around the car it helps you to, to take a look around the car and it also shows you in this manner as well so I think this is definitely one of the highlight features of the S-Cross or the s crosses infotainment unit and this 360 camera is actually very easily accessible through a dedicated button here so one of the advantages of having a interior that is very simple and very and and um, built in a rudimentary way is that it is very useful from a utilitarian standpoint so everything is very neat and clean and straightforward so button right here, no need to go through a whole bunch of menus to activate it. Aircon controls are straightforward. Jump into the car the first time and you'll be able to use it. This is a dual dual um, dual dual climate zone um, aircon system. So you've got two temperature gauges on both sides. Uh, single blower. So and then of course all your uh, option buttons are here below. Everything's really clear cut and it works. I mean there is really no need to. Um, embed all these buttons into infotainment units in my opinion uh, and then of course further down you got USB ports these are this is USB A though so you've got no USB C you've got a bit of a storage space here and then of course you've got you've got a fairly traditional looking gear selector or drive selector which actually I'm kind of fond of um, because I do like to hold on to this as I'm driving that makes me feel a bit more secure um, and you've also got a physical handbrake which is kind of nice so you can uh, execute some handbrake turns if you should so desire but anyway i don't recommend that you do that this car is a bit of a crossover it's not like a hatchback or anything so um please don't chuck it into a corner and do a do a handbrake turn uh, but in any case uh, this is how the car is built got two cup holders here and a and a center bin sorry i didn't press the catch earlier that that's my fault um Further in front. So one thing that you'll find interesting is that this still runs a half analog driver's display and you've got a digital screen in the middle here. So a little bit like um, what you will find on a mid-2000s Volkswagen. It look, looks quite similar. The analog dials are actually pretty clear, pretty uh, uh, visible. So like visibility is very good. And uh, most of the information that you need is is, is there because if you're in the market for a car like that you probably only need very very straightforward things you're not buying this car because you are trying to achieve some sort of aspirational goals or you are trying to impress somebody this is really a car that you you buy because um, you know it works within your budget and it gives you the features that you need and as you will see later on I'll show you uh, it actually drives pretty well too um, so all those things are, are the things that you can benefit from uh, but anyway, analog dials, so it shows you your speedo, your RPMs, and most of the information in the center screen is actually related to your fuel economy and range because this is a mild hybrid after all. So it does have a small focus on economy. Um, other than that, this steering wheel, multi-function steering wheel with pedal shifters, and these pedal shifters are actually quite nice to press, I must say. One of the better ones actually. Probably nicer than the Audi ones if I'm being honest. Um, in terms of the the feedback that you get when you pull the pedal shifters and I'll show you how they work later on as well when we go for a drive but other than that pretty standard stuff you got volume controls you got cruise control con cruise control settings and it also has a few um, shortcut buttons embedded down here relating to voice command uh, and your uh, wireless speaker for your phone for your wireless phone if you should connect it and uh, this Going back to this system, this runs wireless car play, but not wireless Android Auto. So, not sure why that is the case, but anyway, uh, if you're an iPhone user, you 
uh, like, like myself, you have no complaints here because it is a wireless system. But uh, if you are an Android user, I'm afraid you still need a wire. Uh, but in any case, let's test out the voice control system because I've got a bit, a bit of a treat for you. The, <laughs> the voice command module is quite, it's quite entertaining. Please say a command. Go to radio. Pardon? Go to radio. Switching to radio. Please say a radio command. <laughs> Cancel. Ending speech recognition. Right, so <laughs> I'm not sure what you think about the about the voice on the voice control module, but I think it's gotta be one of the most entertaining voices I've ever heard. Um but anyway, enough about that. Um further down the right side here. Because this car is very undigitalized, uh, which I kind of like actually, you've got all your settings. Um, so your 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 lane lane departure warning all on off is over here. Uh, traction control off is here. Auto start stop has a dedicated button right here, which is wonderful. Um, and all the lights are just all the buttons is physical bu buttons, which you know what they they kind of make sense. Um, everything is easy to understand on this car. Um, but aside from all that. I think the S-Cross also, people buy it or people will be looking at the S-Cross also as a family car because it is built as crossover after all. So there is supposed to be some space in the rear. So let's go check out the rear and see what sort of space we can get from the rear bench of this car. Alright, so this is the rear of the Suzuki S-Cross and this driver's seat is in my regular driving position. I'm 175 meters tall and this is the amount of legroom that I have. So not humongous obviously, but it is an entry level crossover and I still get a decent amount of legroom. There is a decent amount of headroom as well. And if I really want to sit in a more natural position, I still have quite an adequate amount of legroom. Unfortunately, you do not get rear air vents in this car. Um, which you know in Singapore, I think could I, I think should be a mandatory feature because of our climate. But in any case, blowers of this car are pretty strong. So even in most of the time, I'm driving I'm driving around in in um the number one setting, and now in the number two setting, I can already quite comfortably feel a draft coming to the back, and it still has like up to six five or six settings. So definitely enough blower power. For the air to reach the back but of course the question is if there is if you need to increase the fan speed to reach the back then um i'm not sure if the front passengers might be a bit annoyed because the noise will be quite high and of course then they will get hit by a uh, unnecessarily strong blast of air conditioning <laughs> but in any case um going back to the rest of the car there is a fairly flat floor there is a little bit of a transmission hump here but nothing too serious so if you really did want to squeeze three smaller sized people in the back of this car, it wouldn't be too uncomfortable. Um, and it's got a nice boxy shape as well. So generally speaking, I think headroom is okay. You know, you're not gonna get any complaints from um, of people hitting their heads on the sides. Um, there are isofix points on this car as well. So this means that the car is ready to carry uh, isofix compatible child seat. So in that sense, it's actually perfectly uh, capable of doing a family car's job if this is the kind of duty that you need the S-Cross to perform. But, with that said, let's jump back into this seat because I think it's my favourite seat in the car and uh, go for a drive because I think that's where the S-Cross does its best work. Alright guys, so now we are on the move, on the roads in the Suzuki S-Cross and to get some basic specifications out of, out of the way, this car runs a 1.4 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine mated to a six speed automatic which um, means that it runs a top converter so actually not bad for a car in this segment because a lot of the cars in this segment are actually running uh, CVTs uh, which of course you find in the uh, Yaris Cross but of course the um, Nero Hybrid runs a dual clutch transmission so I guess the S-Cross compared to the Kia Nero definitely enjoy a little bit of a, a more driver-centric driving dynamic which I think is a little bit better than a CVT of course. Um, 
and this engine setup is actually good for like in the S-Cross it's actually good for about 127 horsepower and 235 newton meters of torque which puts it comfortably within category A COE so things are still kept quite affordable relatively speaking of course Cat ACOE is also not cheap these days but it, 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 it definitely still offers some cost savings compared to a car that sits within Cat B C O E. The Suzuki say that this um, this engine setup is good for about so it will bring the S-Cross from 0 to 100 in about 12-ish seconds which on paper seems really slow but when you're up on the roads it actually feels a lot faster um, the car feels a lot more punchy a lot quicker than the 12 seconds that uh, it indicates but i think part of the reason why it's listed for 12 seconds is also because of the way the s cross is geared so at lower speeds when you're moving off the line turbocharger kicks in really early and that's actually really pleasant so as you can hear there, it's pretty punchy off the line. Um, around the mid-gear segments though, it does sort of taper down a little bit. It does get a little bit more subtle in terms of the acceleration and the torque. So the mid-gears aren't really primed to kind of push the car um, as hard. So moving off the line really well, things get a little bit more settled in the mid-gears. And then, once the car gets up to expressway speeds or highway speeds, as I'll show you later, we're going to go hit the expressway now. Whoa! not used to driving a Japanese car, I'm sorry. Um, turned on the uh, wipers there instead of the turn signals, which are on the right side. <laughs> Gotta remember that. Uh, but in any case, uh, we're gonna go up to the highways in a little bit, and then we're gonna see how the car does there, because I've been driving this car for about a day now, and uh, what I've realized is that the car does actually really, really good work up at speeds. Uh, I was actually really surprised as well, because this car is not a heavy car, it's not a, it's not, I, I wouldn't imagine it's built to be a high-speed cruiser in, in any sense, but it does that job interestingly well. So, at about 100 kilometers per hour or 90 kilometers per hour, this car still runs sub 2000 RPM, which is actually really respectable. Uh, so the whole car feels really settled, and if you're not really pay paying, and paying attention to the speedometer, it actually feels like your car is going a lot slower than the speed that it that is actually going at, which I guess in general is viewed as a positive trait because that means you feel relaxed up on the highways, um, and I think that's where the S Cross probably does its best work. So, as you can hear. Engine actually feels pretty pleasant and when the turbocharger kicks in you do get quite a bit of shove as well. So 235 newton meters of torque and 127 horsepower. That's actually quite on par with the kind of power delivery that you expect from like a Volkswagen Golf, um, which is of course a very good benchmark of how a city car should operate. And gear shifts are also pretty smooth, pretty um pretty crispy. You know, you don't drag it, you like you don't have to drag it out too long. And right now, what I'm going to show you is uh, I'm going to put the car in manual mode. So it does come with a manual mode as well. So in the German cars, of course, they call it like Steptronic or Tiptronic and things like that, right? Uh, and it comes with pedal shifters. So I'm off in first gear now. Upshift. It's actually a pretty nice experience. Three. Third gear. And actually, the pedal shifters actually feel really nice. Um, they, they, they are plastic, they're not metal or or anything like that. They're not aluminium shifters, but the um, the feedback that you get from the pedals are actually quite quite pleasant. Uh, I actually quite enjoy pressing them. They've got this like nice um, magnetic feel to them. So now I'm moving along in third gear. If I want things to settle down, I bring it to fourth. Things quieten down. As I'm approaching a junction, I can go 3, 2, 1. And then, when you want to take off, So as you can hear, the 1.4 litre 
turbocharged power unit in this car it actually feels quite happy to be revved it, it, it doesn't protest in any way it's quite pleasant actually I'm gonna put the car back to, 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 to full auto now and uh you know compared to some cars that, 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 that really really protest when you push it I would say the S-Cross feels like quite a happy car to be revved up and I think that's a very pleasant pleasant and positive trait of course it's not particularly refined but it's still a nice uh, nice feeling you know it reminds me of when I had my very first so my very first car was a Suzuki Swift Sport and um, it gives you that kind of raw acceleration that's quite pleasant and I think for anybody who has ever driven uh, 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 any Suzuki Swift or any sort of uh, maybe uh, maybe an Ignis in the past or maybe an S Max, which was the predecessor of the S Cross. I think you will find this quite quite familiar. And uh, incidentally, for those who are interested, this 1.4 liter turbocharged unit is actually the same engine that you find in the current Swift Sport. So this is definitely an engine that is pushable, so to speak. You know, it does have a little bit of performance uh, uh, packed into it. So as I was saying earlier, you know, put this car up to speed. So now right right now we're going at about 80 plus. I'm only doing about 1,500 RPM, which is actually really, really respectable. So my overall feelings of this car, now we're closing in on 90, you're still at about 1,005. So very comfortable car. And honestly, I feel like I'm going at, I feel like I'm going at 70. <laughs> so I feel like I'm going really slowly in the outer lane, but actually I'm not. I'm uh, actually going at quite a decent pace. So for those of you who, um, enjoy this sort of a, a feeling in a car then I think the S cross is definitely something to consider which also brings me to kind of my final point because the S cross is obviously a car that sits in at a entry level segment so uh, and as you can see from the interior earlier as well when I walked you through it generally the car has been built to a cost you know you don't expect too much from the interior uh, there is a little bit of rattling going on around the car when you're going over like harsh bumps and stuff like that but it is very accept very expected in a car in, of this segment but what is not expected of a car in this segment is the fact that it drives really well so you get quite a decent amount of low-end performance for city driving and you've got pretty exact pretty pretty impressive highway cruising performance uh, you know obviously we're not good we're not talking about going at 180 kilometers per hour, but just normal Singapore driving on the highways when going 80 and 90. This is a pretty comfortable car to drive. Um, there is some road noise coming into the cabin, but it's not huge amounts. You know, it's very tolerable. It's, um, and I guess if I were to really, really think about it, I would say that if I had to take a long distance trip up to Malaysia, and I had to choose between the Yaris Cross, the Kia Niro Hybrid and this car I would probably pick the S-Cross um, for the way it handles and drives on the highways Of course in town, I might probably opt for something like the Niro Hybrid Just cause I think the... Um, that's a full hybrid You know, you can't really compare it to this which is a mild hybrid But with a full hybrid, you do get a little bit more... Uh, more of use and the lower speed ranges because the hybrid motor does kick in from time to time and you do get a little bit more power off the line and a little bit more smoothness as well and I am quite a big fan of that dual clutch but in any case I would pick the Nero hybrid for city driving and I would pick the S-Cross for highway driving of course um, the Toyota the Yaris Cross definitely beats up the two of these cars in terms of fuel economy but this car is no slouch either, you know. Suzuki says that it will do about 17.5 kilometers per liter. And although I haven't had enough time to really test out that theory, I am actually of the opinion that that is, actually, that is possible. It, it, it's not something that, um, I, I mean, if you drive this really carefully over long distances, I think you could potentially hit an economy figure that's quite close to that. Uh, so to round off the review, I am actually quite impressed with the drive of the S-Cross for two main reasons. What it offers drivers is very good punch off the line, which I think in Singapore is very applicable because we've got very short distances between junctions, traffic, uh, expressway exits and so on and so forth. You need that little short burst of speed 
to kind of get where you need to go. And I think the S Cross, despite being Cat A, will do that job for you around town. And obviously, the thing I really like about it is the way that it is also transformable into a highway cruiser. So, you know, if you are taking your family on a road trip overseas, this is going to be a car that's going to be quite comfortable to drive. And, you know, obviously, if you're looking at cars in this segment, you're looking at cars, um, or like you probably have a budget in mind, and that, that's all well and good, but definitely within the budget, you're not going to want the, you know, like you also want value for money, even if you're shopping at the lower segments. And I think what the S-Cross can offer you up on the highways or at expressway speeds is something that probably its closer competitors lose out on a little bit. So there you have it. Um, if there are any other questions about the Suzuki S-Cross that you want to know about uh, that I haven't actually covered, please put those questions in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. If not, I will ask my friends over at Suzuki and then uh, we'll get the answer to you one way or another. Um, just a gentle reminder before we go, if you are a driver in Singapore and you're thinking about selling your used car or consigning it for the best price possible, be sure to check out the link in the description box below because through those links, we will be able to provide you the highest possible code and valuation for your used car. So if you're interested, please check it out. It's free to inquire. Link in the des description box. Um, in, and of course, if you are, if you have enjoyed this review in any way or if you have found it useful in, in any way, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel because we've got more reviews coming out every single week. Sometimes we've got reviews of really, really, really upmarket cars. Sometimes we've got reviews of really day-to-day -day cars like the Suzuki S-Cross. So a good mix of cars there. It would be wonderful if you could stay tuned for those as well. Um, and as usual, please take care of yourself, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.